It's time for our 360 round. We're looking at mega cap tech, a very popular sector. So now what for 2025? Andrew Graham, CEO, Jackson Square Capital, and Michael Robinson, tech analysts, are both with us. Andrew, I'll start with you. I mean, when we look at the MAG7 names, uh, not too shabby. Sure, maybe some are off the highs. Some are still hitting highs. Um, are they still the Magnificent Seven as you know it, Andrew? Yeah. They're still the Magnificent Seven. I, I think the story here behind the scenes is that if you look at consensus earnings estimates, these stocks are, are going to have 18 uh, percent earnings growth in 2025, but that's down from 33 percent earnings growth last year, whereas the other 493 stocks in the S&P are expected to have 12 percent earnings growth, which is up from 3% last year. So you have this narrowing differential between the two. With last year, it was 30 percentage points. It's now going to be six percentage points if we take consensus at its word. And I think this narrowing of the earnings growth differential, it might take some people by surprise. There's going to be more upside, I think, in the 493 as they sort of catch up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to ask you how you would go about playing that because they think about the triple Qs or looking at the individual needs. Michael, how about you? How do you feel about big tech for the new year? I feel pretty good about it. I think, you know, we talked a year ago almost to the day, and I said big tech would obviously be a major focus of the market, probably dominate it, and that's what's happened. Nicole, we have a new paradigm here. <clears throat> We've only been six years ago, there was no trillion dollar market cap for any tech company. Today, you have seven of those. And three or four of them are like more than two and a half trillion dollars in, in value. So just that alone makes those that those just the, just those few right there are are obviously dominating the, the market. I do think we're going to see a little bit of slowdown. You're already starting to see it a little bit in some of the Mag Seven stocks. Uh, uh, Microsoft and Apple are up for the last three months of the year here, uh, about ten percent, uh, whereas Nvidia is up more than thirty five percent. I do think you're going to see uh, money moving into other big tech names that haven't been as famous. They're not like uh, Salesforce is really up a lot in the last three months. They had a very strong third quarter report, and they also have a new AI initiative, Agent Force. That stock is doing very well. Another company, it's only about $180 billion market cap, but Palantir has just been killing it. It's up something like uh, 130, 140% just in the last quarter. I don't expect that kind of momentum to sustain all through 2025, but I think people are starting to look beyond those obvious famous names where a lot of money is being invested in AI and they're looking at other players who may be involved in AI, but may not be uh, so big. Um, one other good thing for big tech right now is with the new administration, they're going to be, I think, a little bit less um, uh, persnickety about just big tech in general and stopping the mergers and acquisitions. So I do think we'll see some bolt on acquisitions happening in the big tech space, maybe acquiring okay. smaller players that add a lot of efficiency and more growth. And to Andrew's point, they're going to want to keep their earnings per share growth high. And you'll do that partly with some bolt on acquisitions because of the efficiencies. Yeah. And Andrew, how would you go about playing tech for 2025? What would you be buying or how would you maneuver? Yeah. So last week's software results, I thought, had evidence of the sort of a ramp in AI related revenue. We've been going through this valley of disillusionment, I think, when it comes to AI and um, people's thoughts around where's the you know, where's the ROI on AI? And I think it came through a little bit in some of those reports mentioning Salesforce and, and a few others. Um, so that's that's a place where we want to be. I think software in general um, kind of fits with the overall macro backdrop and maybe the incoming administration. You know, we're talking about tariffs and so forth. Um, software is not subject to uh, tariffs like semiconductors are. We've seen some of that rotation go on. But I think, you know, within the uh, MAG7 names, Amazon's our favorite coming out of reInvent. I think they've narrowed the AI gap and, and with their own silicon and um, Tranium2 and the foundation model they have at Bedrock seems um, to be working very well and very popular, breadth of LLMs and so forth. That's our number one pick there. Um, we also have yeah, an honorable yeah. mention or two. You also, had a, you also had a thought on Tesla. Winner, loser, what do you think? 
So Andrew. yeah, we define we define the Tesla um, investor or whatever world as haters and uh, doubters and and true believers, and we are in the uh, what we're in the doubters camp, and we're trying to come around to believing a little more. Their FSD 12.3 version 12.3 was a step function increase in you know in their miles per critical intervention. There's 900,000 users now that have it fully you know capable on their on their cars. And FSD 13 is the first version to be trained on the Austin supercluster. And I think that once you get to sort of uh, MPCIs close to what Waymo is, and I think there's indications that they're going to be there on the version 13, you're going to have this robo taxi thing become more of a potential reality. And that's much fatter margins in selling cars. Yeah, and this week we have Broadcom, Oracle, Adobe. Um, any Anything about this week that might stand out to you, Michael, quickly? Uh, not any one particular one. I, I try not to trade anything based on what's happening in the headlines that day or one particular earnings report. I'm always looking at the trend. I do see a shift in the market already taking place for next year. It's happening at the end of this year, which is movement to more smaller cap names like Celestica, which is involved in AI infrastructure. is doing really well. The stock has just been on fire. Another one would be Vertiv. Uh, they're partnering with NVIDIA. They, they do, uh, they're, they're involved in liquid cooling for AI data centers at scale, and they've just been tearing the cover off the ball. So I do see a shift down. I think that this is going to be a little bit more of a risk on market that will favor small caps. It looks like inflation is somewhat under control. That also bodes well for the, for the uh, small cap space. Smaller, I'm not talking like, you know, $250 million. I'm talking, you know, uh, $10 billion cap a mid cap up to about $50 billion. So those are going to, those select stocks in that small cap space, I think are going to do very well in 2025. Okay. Thank you both. Andrew Graham, Jackson Square Capital, Michael Robinson, tech analyst. Andrew, Michael, thank you. Good to see you both.